Dear students, in this module, we continue with our case study on mass spectrometry-based proteomics. So this is the second part of your case study. And as you know, that the mass spectrometry-based proteomics begins with measurement of intact protein or peptides mass. So let me uh, briefly uh, mention that the intact molecule may be a protein or a peptide. So that intact molecule or the precursor molecule is measured in the MS1. You get multiple peaks reported and you only select the monoisotopic peak for the intact precursor molecule. In the next step, you fragment this intact molecule into peptides that are smaller in size as compared to the precursor. This fragmentation breaks the backbone of the protein or peptide and two fragments are formed. There are multiple strategies for fragmentation and that each fragment that you obtain can further be measured for its molecular weight as well. It is important to note here that one part of the protein goes to become the N-terminus peptide or fragment and the other part goes to become the C-terminus peptide or fragment. So let's take an example. If you have a protein with a hundred residues and let's say you fragment the protein at the 50th amino acid residue, then you will obtain two fragments. Similarly, if you were to fragment the protein at the second residue, you will also have two fragments. Then you take another molecule of this intact protein or peptide and you fragment it at the 40th residue, you will have two fragments as well. The only thing that is varying is the size of the N-terminus fragment and the C-terminus fragment. So as the N-terminus fragments become small, the C-terminus fragment becomes large and as the N-terminus fragment becomes large, the C-terminus fragment becomes small. So if you had a 100 residue protein or peptide, you would have 200 different possibilities of fragmenting the molecule. Now, once the protein is fragmented and two fragments are generated, you can measure the molecular weight of each fragment. As you did with MS1, you worked with the monoisotopic peak of the protein. Here, you will also choose the monoisotopic peak of the peptide. So, after fragmentation, you will obtain two MS1, uh, two MS2 peaks, and these peaks will be monoisotopic peaks. At this point, it is important to uh, review ionization. A protein can only be measured in a mass spectrometer if it is charged. If you fail to charge a protein molecule, it will not be detected by the mass spectrometer. So if you were to have fragments without a net charge, then those fragments cannot be measured by the mass spectrometer. So therefore, it is important that you review that ESI or electrospray ionization induced multiple charges on the intact protein. So if there are multiple protons on a protein and you fragment the protein, there's a good chance that both the resulting fragments will end up with some portion of the net charge that was there on the intact protein. So ESI is the strategy that is used for MS, MS or tandem MS or MS2. If you were to use uh, uh, ESI for MS1, then you will have multiple ion states, multiple charge states, and this will create difficulty in the charge resolution. So therefore, for MS1, you use MALDI. For MS2, you may want to use ESI. I'll give you an example here in order to further elaborate on the utilization of ESI for MS2. So if this were your protein given here, let's say, of 20 amino acids, then you were to fragment this protein at let's say site number 1, then you will obtain two peptides 
one with just one amino acid that is this one and the rest with the remaining amino acids or if you were to have a fragmentation occurring at the middle then half the peptides will go into the first fragment and half the peptides will go into the second fragment. Now if the entire protein had multiple charges then you will end up with a high probability that both the peptides will receive a charge. Let's say if the peptide is fragmented here this peptide will have two positives and this peptide will have four positives or four protons. So it is important to have multiple charges on the protein. Just as an example, if we were to have just one proton or one positive charge on the protein and you were to fragment it, then this peptide will not be reported by the mass spectrometer because it does not have a net charge. So that is why ESI is used for MS2. Now the 10 MS or the MS2 or MSMS helps us to measure the molecular weight of the daughter ions or the peptides.